Hello everyone, my name is Brendan Snyder. Thank you so much for joining me and welcome to another episode of New Music Finds number 66. So this is where I like to collect together all the new music that I've purchased over the past week and present it to you. And I get it from different places like my local record stores, but also online retail like Amazon, eBay, and more. And for this past week, I have five new music finds to go through with you. Not as many as I normally get, but still some good stuff nonetheless. And so it breaks down as three new releases and two new CDs coming from my local record store. I made a trip to Academy Records, of which I did a uh, Let's Go to the Record Store experience video. I'll leave a link to that in the description below so you can get the full thing if you haven't already seen it. And before we dive into this, though, if you're new to my channel and you haven't already hit the subscribe button, please click the button. Also, leave a comment, hit like. All those things help support my channel. I would greatly appreciate it. And of course, as an added bonus, by subscribing, you'll be able to stay up to date on all that's going on in the world of music, just like this with New Music Finds, episode number 66. So kicking things off as we always do, we start with brand new releases, and we're actually gonna jump back a couple weeks here to May 6th of 2022 for a release that uh, took a couple extra weeks to get to me, but I finally got it, and I'm glad that I did, because I'm really enjoying this one. It's the brand new Timothy B. Schmidt album, Day by Day. Of course, if that name sounds familiar to you, it's because he is the bassist for the Eagles. Also the bass player for Poco going back, having replaced Randy Meisner in both cases with those bands. Kind of always found that interesting. First he replaces them in Poco, and then replaces them in the Eagles. This album here called Day by Day is actually his seventh solo album. So Timothy B. Schmidt has always been in demand as a session musician, a background vocalist, that sort of thing, doing harmony stuff like that, but also just an all-around great musician in his own right and doesn't quite get enough love in my opinion. It certainly always goes out to the other Eagle members, but uh, Timothy B. Schmidt definitely deserves his uh, day in the spotlight. And uh, this album here certainly is a uh, you know, a shining light within his catalog, in my opinion. I wasn't expecting a whole lot from this, but opening track, Simple Man, actually has Lindsey Buckingham playing on it. And so I didn't quite know why my ear was so attuned to that when I first heard it as a single. Uh, but then, of course, once I found out Lindsey Buckingham was playing and I could certainly see why. But, you know, there's a lot of great stuff. Everything from the sort of Eagles, you know, harmonies and uh, folk stylings that they do all the way through the harder rock stuff and soulful stuff and so forth. So it's all covered on this and in my opinion a great album and would highly recommend it if you're a fan of uh, anything that the Eagles have done or past uh, Timothy B. Schmidt solo albums. All right, so jumping ahead now to May 20th, this past Friday, and the new stuff that came out for that, we've got uh, one that, that I think was a pretty big, uh, kind of important one that came out, The Police Around the World. Uh, this one here restored an expanded edition. So The Police don't do a whole lot uh, archivally. They've, um, you know, remastered albums and things of that nature, and you can actually see the box set there behind me that collected together a disc of outtakes and rarities and b-sides and stuff, but they don't have lots and lots of archival stuff, and hopefully we're going to be getting some of that soon, but this thing here is sort of the first up in all of that. And it's from their um, 1983 documentary of the time called Around the World that documented their first world tour. And so this one being the 40th anniversary of that and, um, you know, first major world tour. And now you can get it on either DVD or Blu-ray. Mine's the DVD version of this thing. But the reason that um, I was excited about this thing is that now they're adding to this a CD featuring nine live performances uh, from the documentary and so forth. So I love my documentaries and all that kind of stuff, but I actually really like it when I can get audio of it as well. And it's just well done the way it's put together and so forth. So you can see the two discs here. And we've got a really great uh, booklet that's inside this thing as well. So they did this thing up nice. You know, we've got some... Uh, you know, written discussion about what's going on and so forth, and just great photos from that era and time period and so forth, and then track listing information and so forth there. But all in all, very good packaging. I love that we finally got some audio from the thing. So that one there was a really exciting one for me. Big fan of the police. Now this next one too, I also found really interesting. It's the brand new James Labrie, Beautiful Shade of Grey, and of course James Labrie being the lead vocalist of Dream Theater. So this one here being his fourth solo album, it's not like the other ones that he has done. You know, that have generally focused on even somewhat heavier stylings than Dream Theater. This one here is kind of the opposite. 
opposite of that, it's actually doing predominantly all acoustic based uh, songs on here. Interesting, the bone, one of the bonus tracks is the first track, Devil and Drag, which was the first single. That one has an electric version. That's the last track on the album. It doesn't stipulate it as a bonus track, but I do like that they book in the album with a um, acoustic and electric version of that. And uh, really interesting that it does focus predominantly on acoustics, natured instrumentation and things of that nature on here. And I wasn't quite sure what to expect with it but I have to say upon first listen I didn't quite get grabbed into it but with more and more listens to the thing by about the third listen through on this thing I found myself really enjoying it and so you know sometimes those releases you just have to listen to them in different contexts and stuff when I got it on Friday and I listened to it it didn't quite do anything for me I put it on Saturday morning and then it worked so you know maybe whether it was the morning or what it was or my mind was just cleared from what I was listening to um, I really started to grow on this and appreciate it for what it is and the sort of chances that he's taking doing a release like this. So that was pretty cool. Definitely enjoying that and would recommend it if you're a, a fan of um, you know either James Abri solo, but definitely Dream Theater stylings. Of course, there's James there in the middle there and playing with, uh, as I understand, I believe it's the guitarist from Eden's Curse. So um, you know if you're a fan of that band and um, who that is, also worth checking out for this. So then I did make a trip to my local record store, Academy Records, down in the Chelsea area of Manhattan. And I hit that place up pretty frequently and they've always got something good there. And as I mentioned, I did do an experience video. So I'm gonna leave a link in the description to that. You can uh, check that out, which we'll also show you at the end of it to what I picked up. But these are the things that I picked up. So the Cars Anthology, just what I needed. This was a 1995 two CD compilation that came out at the time featuring 40 tracks. And I'd never really paid much attention to it over the years. I'm an albums guy, so I always have the albums. And I've got a couple compilations already from the Cars. So again, never really paid this one much attention, but I was big into the Cars just recently, listening to their albums and whatnot, and Rick Ocasek's solo, Benjamin Orr solo, Elliot Easton, and so forth. So when I took a look at this and decided to dive into it a bit, and I found out that it had 14 rarities on it of things like single versions, remixes, demos, B-sides, outtakes, it suddenly made this thing a lot more tempting for me, worth picking up, so I'm glad that I did. And then the uh, booklet in this thing has also done really well. I appreciate it. I mean, we're collectors of the physical format, so you know you want that booklet to be uh, well done, nice photos. I love having something to read while I'm listening to uh, whatever it is, whether it's a brand new album or it's some archival release uh, like this, you know. But it's like, there's a lot to cover. Like always does it right so you can see they go through all of the track listing they tell you what release it comes from whether it's a rarity or you know uh, outtake or what it is so it's nice that they go into all of that information uh, in this thing and you know sometimes you know we get stuff and it doesn't really tell you a lot about what album it comes from and or when it was recorded or what the circumstances or session you know was or so forth uh, this release here, Cars, Just What I Needed, this anthology uh, done by Electric Records really does it upright, so that's cool. One of the other things that I picked up from there, and this one was a, a good find for me, it's not something necessarily that I've been really hunting for, but you know, it's one of those things that when I found it, I knew that it was a good find. Vandenberg, Best of Vandenberg, 1988 release, original Atco Records version of this thing. 11 track compilation from Adrian Vandenberg and his band focuses on the first three albums that he did. You know, Adrian Vandenberg, if you're not familiar with him, played in White Snake. He wrote the album Slip of the Tongue, but didn't play on it due to an injury. They brought Steve Vai in, so Steve Vai gets a lot of recognition for that time period and era. But he later rejoined the band when it reformed for Restless Heart, wrote and played on that album. So that one just had a uh, 25th anniversary because it originally came out in 1997. So, uh, you know, if you picked that up, then you were listening to Adrian Vandenberg on there. He also has a project called Moon Kings, which is really quite great. They've done two full-length albums and an EP of acoustic material so that's always good and then Adrian Vandenberg had recently reformed the band under a new lineup put out an album in 2020 during the pandemic and it featured Ronnie Romero on vocals so a lot of stuff out there from Adrian Vandenberg but this is the original stuff here and um, you know for what this is this uh, uh, you know it's pretty good 
in and of itself got an image on the inside there and a little bit of write up there and again you know from a 1988 release uh that's kind of uh you know something that wasn't going on a lot at that time so that's really nice uh that they did that both uh giving a little bit of write up there and a little you know a little extra info on the inside because a lot of those things is just lyrics you know back in the day that's all the stuff they used to really put in these things was lyrics and and for me at least i don't really need lyrics i need the other stuff i i can listen to it i can look the lyrics up online kind of stuff but I definitely appreciate it when they go beyond that and give you a little bit of commentary and something else and so forth. So anyway, there you go. Those are the five new music finds that I had for this past week. As I said, it's not as much as I normally have. I'm usually in the eight to 10 range or higher, but uh, still some really good stuff nonetheless in there. So all of this part of episode 66, hopefully you enjoyed it. And if you did, consider uh, leaving a comment and uh, certainly subscribing if you're not already subscribed, but consider sharing it out on social media, help spread the word that way. I would greatly appreciate it. All right, everyone, take care. I'll talk to you all real soon. Bye-bye, everyone.